you drafted a seventh rounder this year uh, in uh, Mike Strachan. Um, and he'll go in there with Paris Campbell there as well, who hopefully can um, leave his uh, injury issues um, behind him. Mm-hmm. What uh, is there real maybe to bring another person in there? Because you mentioned on your own show, um, I caught there a couple of days ago that you, you spoke about Julio Jones. And obviously all the news at the moment is that the Falcons are open to trading them for, it looks like a second round will do it, but is it too much of a risk to maybe give a second round to the Falcons for Julio, mostly just because it looks like you'll probably lose next year's first due to the Carson Wentz deal, providing he does play, I think it's 70, 75% of the snaps for next season. Um, so losing your first and your second round for next year's draft, will that probably mm-hmm. be too uh, too high of a price to pay along with the obviously the massive contract that Jones would be on. Yeah, I think you nailed it. I, I think the Colts still have some positions that they're not 100% sure on. And obviously every year there's a position that you really want to address and hit it hardcore. Um, yeah, I think you hit it right there on the head. Like you may have, a, you, you depending on what happens with Wentz, you hope it's a first rounder if you're a Colts fan. Then you're out of first rounder. You're, then you'd be out of second rounder. I mean, Julio Jones, as great as he has been, and I don't want to like say he has because he, he's been one of the best receivers in the, in the NFL. But he's 32 years old. That contract, I know a lot of people say don't worry about contracts, but I kind of am because he's one of the highest paid receivers in the NFL, right? So something has to give there. Um, you know, if you're if you if you trade for Julio Jones, are you not resigning like Naheem Hines or somebody like that? Somebody who's a homegrown guy that's young and is continuing to get better and better. I think just for me, a lot of people feel like the Colts receiving core, while I agree, it doesn't have right now on paper a number one true threat. I think there's a lot to like about this receiving core. I mean, T.Y. Hilton last year, a lot of people said he had a bad year. I don't think he did. I just think the way that Philip Rivers spreads the ball around, he's not going to have what the, the type of numbers that he had um, with Andrew Luck. I think that's just a natural thing with how Phil s- spreads the ball around. Uh, Michael Pittman, like you mentioned, I mean, he, he started to come on strong, especially in that playoff game against Buffalo. He was really coming into his own, and the Colts feel really good about him. You mentioned Paris Campbell. He's a weapon when he's healthy. Problem is he hasn't been healthy, but the Colts have some other options too that I feel pretty good about. Zach Pascal's another name. He's just been a solid receiver as well. So the receiving game isn't, you know, they don't have incredible receivers, right? At least right now, but I think it's good enough to feel, you feel good about it, right? You feel pretty good about your receivers and also your tight ends as well. The Colts drafted a tight end. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like overly impressed with the wide receivers, but it's certainly, uh, something where I don't think it needs to be a Julio Jones like trade to go get your number one, get a number one receiver. Because I think Michael Pittman, a lot of, I think the Colts feel like he, he has a chance to ascend into that number one spot this season. 